The Aryan Brotherhood of Texas is one of the most violent hate groups in America. If someone disrespects you, you have to destroy them, period. This white supremacist gang operates a criminal network from behind their prison bars. You know, I really ain't supposed to do this, but if you disrespect us, we're gonna pay you back. Now they reveal their drug smuggling secrets. What we do is we'll liquefy the methamphetamine and we'll bring it over the border liquefied. Their plans to assassinate a policeman. This cop cold blood murdered him. And one high-ranking general is intent to ignite a bloody gang war so he can take control of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas. I'm gonna get it, or I'm gonna die trying to get it. Texas has one of the fastest growing prison populations in the country. The number of inmates has tripled in size in the past 20 years. Inside prison walls, some of the most violent inmates belong to the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas. What started behind bars has now spread, with nearly 5,000 members running a criminal syndicate, both in and outside of prison. The ABT, as it's called, combines the violence of a prison gang, the power and money of organized crime, and Nazi ideology, making them a threat to their own members and to outsiders alike. Since its creation in the 1980s, ABT members have committed murders and kidnappings, attempted bombings, and gained control of part of Texas's multi-million dollar methamphetamine trade. The Styles Unit in Beaumont, Texas, houses one of the most notorious ABT inmates in the Texas prison system. Bobby Adams, a founding member of the ABT, is currently serving life in prison for armed robbery. Adams and a group of white inmates founded the ABT to protect themselves from the other racially divided gangs in Texas prisons. In uh, 85, 86, Texas was the most violent prison system in the United States, you know, and more stabbings per, per capita per inmate uh, than anywhere else. Uh, it was pretty bad. It was, you know, it was, they was stabbings on the wreck yard yeah, when we was in population, chow halls, you know, it was, it just, it, you know, a lot of it was racial. My idea was that we couldn't organize the Mexicans, we can't organize the blacks, but we could organize the whites. The ABT is governed by a council of five generals, collectively known as the Wheel. Each of these generals controls a region in the gang's primary territories, Texas and New Mexico. It's set up on a military type deal, but it's really three things for the membership. The spiritual part of it is the brotherhood, financial part of it as far as making money and, and physical we come together to counter any type of problems, you know. Because it's outnumbered by non-white gangs in prison, the ABT operates on pure terror. They believe the more ruthless the violence, the stronger the message. If you mess with us, we're going to get you right. <laughs> The ABT lures in new prospects with the promise of protection. Recruits are schooled to believe in Nazism and the superiority of whites. Tattoos of swastikas and SS lightning bolts indicate their allegiance. Gang members must earn the right to wear these bolts by committing acts of violence for the group. This ABT member has agreed to speak as long as he can hide his identity. The cuts on his face are from what he refers to as an accident the night before. He has been an ABT member for over 10 years and believes he's defending his heritage. Our race is being bred out of existence right now. In Texas, we're now the minority. It's the breeding out of who we are. 
You know, we're warriors. I've been a warrior my whole life. I'll be a warrior till the day I die. ABT is vicious. <laughs> There's a vicious part of it that is murders, and they're gonna get their respect, come whatever it takes. They're gonna get their respect. You know, so you better step light. <laughs> The ABT demands total loyalty and has a code of allegiance, a blood code, blood in and blood out. ABT first started, the blood in, blood out was you had to kill somebody to get in. It was straight murder. At one time in the Texas penitentiary, there was a murder, at least one murder every week. Each new member must prove himself to the Brotherhood by committing acts of violence. I know that every one of my brothers is down. I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. You know, I know that they had to do something. They had to prospect, and prospect is hard. It's hard, because any, any, any brother could just walk up to you and say, hey, go whoop that toad over there. And you're gonna go have to whoop that black guy. You're gonna have to. You have no choice. There's not a no, maybe. You go do it right now. The rising level of violence associated with the ABT has captured the attention of the Anti-Defamation League, a watchdog group that monitors white supremacists and other hate groups. ABT violence is literal overkill, you know, inmates who have been stabbed 70 times, uh, people whose bodies have been dragged around in full view of either the yard or security cameras, you know, where other people can see. Killings that are meant to make a broader point than just getting rid of the victim. Anti-Defamation League has tracked racist prison gangs for, for quite some time. And one of the reasons we've been spending more time on this is because increasingly these groups are present not only in the prisons, but on the streets. And so they're causing more problems than before. And so we've been devoting more time to them than before. Racist prison gangs combine the criminal know-how of organized crime with the ideologically motivated convictions of a hate group. You do see some crossover, for example, between racist prison gangs and other types of white supremacists. You do see the presence of hate crimes among their criminal activities. But the ABT have unusual priorities for a white supremacist organization. They will work with black and Mexican gangs if it means turning a profit. Their organized crime aspect comes first, and ideology comes second. With the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas, for example, they're even explicit about this in their official documents, that the business comes first. They will make a strategic alliance with, for example, a Mexican gang for some particular reason, like control of the drug trade in a prison or some mutual benefit. I'm about making money and, uh, you know, hating somebody It don't make me a dime. I don't care if it's a little green man from Mars, if he wants to do some business and he treats me with respect, I'm gonna treat him with respect, you know. The actual amount of profit linked to ABT drug trafficking is unknown. But last year alone, nearly $150 million worth of meth was seized in Texas. And as the ABT makes money, it also attracts new recruits. ABT has got 120 units in this system now, and they've been recruiting people from state jails and county jails and anybody that, I mean, they're just picking up anybody and everybody, you know. But as the organization grows, it becomes harder to maintain order. The rich pickings can tempt ABT members to overthrow their current leaders and take control for themselves. And one ABT general has decided to do exactly that. I'm not scared of them. I don't fear them. This is the end of a chapter and the beginning of a new chapter. And next, revenge breeds revenge as a policeman becomes a target. And the ABT goes to war.
in Albuquerque, New Mexico, 340 kilometers west of the Texas border. The city's regional correctional facility houses one of the commanding generals of the ABT, James Thompson. This is the first time he has spoken on camera, but Thompson has a warning for anyone who would betray his own trust. You know, I really ain't supposed to do this, but the other generals, you know, they're, they're behind me. But, you know, if you disrespect us, we're gonna pay you back. Sometimes it can get pretty messy. Thompson is plotting to destroy the current ABT leadership and take sole control of the gang. When I set out to do something, I'm not gonna let it stop me. It's like, you know, a wolf. Even though he's a predator, if he gets trapped, he hits you off his own foot to release himself, you know? If I really want something bad enough, I'm gonna get it, or I'm gonna die trying to get it. Convicted of multiple crimes, including theft, burglary, assault, and dealing drugs, Thompson has spent nearly a quarter of his life behind bars. He joined the all-white Aryan Brotherhood 11 years ago when he first went into prison. When you go to prison in Texas, there's a lot of things that go on inside. When somebody comes over and tries to steal from me and I try to do something about it, and then I get clicked on by 10 or 11 guys, I want somebody there that's gonna be able to back me up. Some of the guys that uh, represented ABT were the more strong, more dominant white folks in prison. And I'm a natural leader, so those are the people I, I was attracted to. Within the Brotherhood, Thompson quickly rose through the ranks. You gotta prove yourself, you know? So I'm willing to stand and fight for what I believe in. It's a matter of life and death in here. That's what people don't realize. Thompson thinks of himself as a warrior preparing for battle. Clashes are common between rival gangs, but Thompson has now turned to fighting within his own organization. He and his fellow generals want complete control of the ABT and its money. They went and formed their own wheel and, and just created a big old mess, you know. It's like a bunch of sharks that are feeding frenzy. They're out for themselves, you know, and they're out there. They ain't paying no attention to nobody. According to Thompson, the old leadership is taking the ABT in the wrong direction by betraying their brothers in order to turn a profit. Thompson's vision for the future of the ABT is to make more money by keeping its members out of prison and on the streets, projecting the image that the ABT is a legitimate organization. Thompson plans his takeover of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas from the isolation of his segregated cell block. Even though he's locked up, he uses a network of ABT members on the street to conduct gang business. The federal government has even accused him of allegedly approving a murder from inside his cell. Inmates have a right to communicate with the outside, but the prison monitors all his messages. If his communications are linked to any illegal activity, he can be prosecuted. But there are ways to get around these measures. My mail's under extreme scrutiny. You know, we just don't write stuff out in plain black and white. We use a lot of metaphors and stuff like that. But it's just a, a lingo that we have, that we understand each other. And Thompson has devised other ways of getting past the prison scrutiny. You can send messages with people that are getting out. You know, uh, not all the COs are, you know, there's dirty cops inside there. So, I mean, you know, we send letters out through them. We can, you know, messages out through them, things like that. Thompson passes orders along to his captains on the outside through these coded messages. This is the makeshift headquarters of the gang in a Texas panhandle town. This is how Thompson reaches the outside world from inside his cell. Due to the ABT's military-like structure, any communication from Thompson is treated as law by his subordinates. 
Okay, I gotta see my shield. The senior captain, known as Lucky, reports directly to Thompson and the other ABT generals. So you follow the order, period. Whether you think it's right or wrong, it don't matter. You follow the order. You do what you're told, when you're told and how you're told. Lucky lost his leg in a gunfight. He joined the gang after his arrest for drugs and aggravated assault. I've been pretty mean in my life. I hit a confidential informant in the head with my crutch and knocked his ear off. And when the fight was over, I put his ear in my pocket. And later that night, when they arrested me for aggravated assault and booked me into jail, I laid his ear on the counter. I'm a part of a family that has some hard, hard men in it. Lucky and his city captain, Peanut, are ABT members who have earned the right to display gang signs and tattoos. It's the ace and the deuce, so which is AB. The only thing that I have as far as anything significant as far as ABT is my life date, which is 2707. The life date marks the day Peanut was finally accepted into the gang. That's the day I become a brother. That's the day that started for me as, as a whole. It's my life date. Then I got ABT on that arm. And a swastika with a five-point crown on it, representing the five-point wheel. And then on my stomach, it says 100% honky. And then my patch. Believe me, some of the meanest men in the world are in Brotherhood of Texas. Back in the Albuquerque Regional Correctional Center, Thompson is chained to the wall while he uses the phone. A correctional officer listens to every word of his conversation with Lucky. Hello? Hello. What's going on? What's up, bro? Just thought I'd call and see how y'all were doing. Have you heard from Thumper? Yes, sir. Better hop. So we need... Thompson wants to make sure Lucky is staying in contact with the other generals, Thumper and Hawk. All right, I'll get a hold of them for you. He's trying to talk about some paperwork that relates to their takeover without the guard understanding. Why have you got that struggle written on? I'll get you that paperwork um, within the next day or so, okay? I've kind of been lagging behind a little bit, but... So we need to get on it? As soon as we can. We needed it done a while back, but... However, as soon as possible. All right, brother, much love. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Lucky not only carries out Thompson's verbal orders, he also oversees gang correspondence, receiving up to 80 letters a week from Thompson and other ABT officers in prison. That's how we have to communicate. I mean, so many of us are in prison, and especially the upper rank right now, they're all in prison. Letters and phone calls from the gang leaders in prison are passed on by captains like Lucky, who send them on to members across the state. And I'm just telling them, you know, a lot of the stuff that's going on now is coming to an end so we can move on to the next stage. The next stage means that Thompson is ready to make his move against the existing leadership of the ABT. While a Brotherhood member on the inside reveals the secrets of the gang's deadly meth trade, the ABT on the outside declares war on the police. And Thompson could soon be joining them as his release date comes closer.